we are hosting this special event from national religious broadcasters conference taking place in nashville tennessee today this generation is facing with uh, the crisis of mental health and we are going to address uh, that issue with an expert uh, dr michael walsh and um, his um, loving wife michelle gannon and uh, we are going to go through the issues that we are facing in today's generation where people are being um victims of these problems um mental health crisis is is something that this nation not just this nation um around the world that is a bigger problem today um as an expert on this issue would you be able to educate people what is really happening in the world today uh that is such a great question i think for many young people coming through covid right was very difficult uh with schools having to shut down right uh not being able to get out of the house being able to socialize with right. their friends mm -hmm. play sports uh it really wore on the psyche of young people mm -hmm. i think it will probably be many years before all the studies and statistics come out showing the immense harm mm. that did to our young people yeah. but in our mental health community we've seen an increase in suicides drug addiction uh pornography usage mm. alcohol addiction uh behavioral problems like ADHD right. and ADD uh bipolar uh have increased in young people right uh really at an alarming statistical rate um and again i think it will be years before we ever see the full impact of that yeah. but it's almost like a national uh ptsd right that happened i know here in america and maybe even in india and mm. other parts of the world right um what do you what do you, what what is your reasoning of accumulating the whole pro problem um in today's generation um i think part of it is spiritual okay uh you know in the bible it says that satan is the prince of the power of the air right and um he does not like anybody that god made us as children of god right, right, right. he's not a fan and right. uh you know does everything he can to wreak havoc right. uh so i think there's an element of that spiritual and i think then just the psychological impact mm -hmm. of uh being shut out of your social network right. shut out of schools you know what whatever had happened as a result of that just the isolation mm -hmm. i think really got to people so i think that's such a great point because um the general public and um the people who are involved in mental health they ignore totally ignore the spiritual part of the whole problem we are facing instead they will think that um, psychological interventions and all the other things uh, that is going to bring the solution so uh, you are on point saying that this is not just um, um psychological issue alone it is a spiritual issue where um we cannot be able to bring solutions not just on on one face alone rather it should be a holistic approach um first starting with the spiritual aspect of the problem and then deal with other uh, things so uh what is your understanding on how to deal with this problem that we are facing um i think you know i'm a doctor i believe in medicine right. i believe in you know yeah. psychiatrists psychologists right um but i think as to your point many times they're just prescribing a medicine right you know take a pill right. to solve your problem i mean that is that is the general idea you know you just go to a doctor and find something and that's it and many time it is not the either they are going to be dependent on that medication 
and they will never come out of it. And I don't know, I, maybe you are the expert uh, saying that whatever side effects um, that can bring into their life using all these drugs. And uh, I have heard stories uh, that uh, these can be very addictive. And what would you be able to say uh, about, the, about that? I think like if you have general anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. they call it GAD, or a depressive disorder, mm. um, there you know there are good medications that kind of keep you at a uh, stable level, so mm. you don't have super highs mm. or super lows. Okay, um, it reforms your um, your neuroreceptors, so basically it it uh, it it helps regulate you medically, right? right. So there's a chemical imbalance mm -hmm. that medication treats that. But a depressive order can also be spiritual, right? Right. Um, you know, just like fear, Paul said to Timothy, I did not give you a spirit of fear, right. but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. So just as fear can be a spirit, I think depressive disorders can be a spirit. Mm. And unfortunately, depressive disorders, if they're not treated over a long term, can mm -hmm. actually reform your DNA. Your oh, really? DNA, yeah, and your yeah. genetic link. So the biological codes. impact is also going to be yeah. there yeah. based on these yeah. kind of problems they are facing. Yeah, which is why we're supposed to cast our cares and anxieties upon God because mm -hmm. he cares for us as Amen. it says in the psalm mm -hmm. and if you're constantly giving over your cares burdens um fears what you know anxieties whatever that is and mm -hmm. allowing him to hold your burdens mm -hmm. right? he's called our burden bearer okay um i'm not designed to carry all of that right you know pain and trauma and things mm -hmm. in my life right i surrender it to god and right. have him help me carry because he has very broad shoulders. He carried the weight of the world and its sin mm -hmm. on those shoulders. So, you know, I although I believe in medications and doctors and all of that, I right. also think, you know, God is called the great physician. Amen. And the great I am is the ultimate healer. And whatever you have, he has the answer to. Um, so basically, the professional side of psychologists or psychiatrists they are trying to cope, to make people coping with the situation rather than finding a solution. Is that is what you are saying? Well, like like the book you're holding that right. we did, uh, uh, Carl Jung, who's uh, one of the fathers of modern psychology, just like Freud and, mm. you know, other psychologists. They're secular, to my knowledge, not right. Christian. Right. Um, and, and I sort of equate it like, you know, for, for Jungian philosophies, you're going down into the deepest, darkest part of your basement mm -hmm. and you don't have a light switch and you don't have a flashlight mm -hmm. and you have to go down to that basement and try to find whatever you're looking for. Right. And that was why Michelle and I wrote the shadow work journal because mm -hmm. you can go with the light of Christ. He says, right. I'm the light of the world. Right. And he can walk you through that basement of dark memories, dark mm -hmm. uh, traumatic events with his light, his healing power, his virtue, mm -hmm. and, and meet you in that moment instead of just going to your shadows mm -hmm. without the help of God. So basically trying to help people come out of that darkness into the marvelous light that is mentioned in the New Testament, um, where they could be able to identify what is wrong with them and find solutions and, and helping. There is a helping hand available uh, through the Word of God, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their life. Is that is what you are suggesting? It is, yeah. And um, part of the workbook we wrote has interactive videos with right. them. Um, so you can do a deeper dive into maybe areas that you suffer with. Right. Um, and um, because Michelle and I have personally walked through mm -hmm. all of our own challenges to, right, right. to get to where we are. Right. Uh, we're not just selling a product like right. we've walked the walk been through those things right. mm -hmm. and um and and live to tell about it right 
right? I sort of love that, uh, you know, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for his rod and his staff comfort me. I personally believe that when you've come out of that valley of the shadow of death, you can become a tour bus mm -hmm. driver, mm -hmm. right? To go rescue other people out yeah. of those same shadows right. and say, you don't have to be afraid, right? right? Cause I walked out of it. I'm, I'm a testimony right. of, of being delivered and set free. So this is not just a book knowledge that they are saying that, oh, this is the, um, philosophy or this is what we think rather than it is a personal experience for both of you right. to go through. Would you be able to touch off a little bit on uh, the struggles you went through to come to this point? Sure. Well, I grew up uh, Catholic uh -huh. um, and was raised Catholic um, in California mm -hmm. and um, got early into drugs and alcohol by the time I was 12 years old. Really? Getting in trouble in school and mm. already been suspended for punching a teacher. Mm. Uh, by the time I was 18, I'd already been arrested five right. times. Mm. And um, and uh, when I was 28, I'd, I'd been a drug and alcohol user and mm -hmm. selling drugs, selling um, you know, cocaine, marijuana, I imported drugs from across the Mexican border, mm -hmm. which is very dangerous and right. had been shot at. Mm -hmm. I was wanted by the FBI. Oh, really? Had four warrants for my arrest. And God spoke to me when I was in my parents' uh, house and said I was going to die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. And I was Catholic, so I didn't believe him. I didn't I didn't think that was God. I right. thought maybe I was having a hallucination. All right. And so I called my best friend to make a long story short. Mm. God took me out of my body and showed me mm. my parents walking in my bedroom. Really? And I was laying there dead. Mm. And then popped me back in my body right. and said, what is your excuse today? And you will die and go to hell if you don't accept my son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. And some uh, Christian had put like a little Bible track on my car window. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed that Bible track and with everything in me, prayed the little prayer on the back out loud. Mm -hmm. And I got instantly set free. Amen. I've not touched a drug since that day. Mm -hmm. Within one week of being this major drug and alcoholic, I moved to Hawaii and went to Bible college mm. and uh, graduated from Bible college in Hawaii and then went into the ministry and started pastoring. And, um, you know, God just redeemed my life. Mm. I ended up working for the Maui police department and the FBI, which I thought was very funny. Right. <laughs> right? The, Once you the, were, yeah. um, you know, running from them. Yeah. And I hated the police. And right. now I love the police. I love the military. You know, right. he just totally changed my life around. Mm. And, um, and then I just kept going to school and mm. finished my master's. And then I got my PhD mm. in this, in the thing that happened to me when I was 12, mm. which is what led me to drugs and alcohol mm. is my father uh, broke a promise to me. Mm. And um, I'll never forget that. And, mm. and once that had happened, that became the wound mm. that I started drinking, smoking pot and, uh, you know, going down a very dangerous road. Mm. And so that's what I did my dissertation on. Okay. Um, to the viewers, I don't know what you are going through. Maybe your children are going through similar situations where their life is being destroyed with the drugs, alcohol, and other um, killer medicines or addictions that are out there. Um, there is hope through Jesus Christ. Christ can redeem you. Our dear doctor had a near-death experience, but he could be able to come out of it. The same God is living today for you. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he can meet your needs and minister to you and restore you and your family and your children. Let's come back to these very special People, um, we're going to talk about doc, doctor. 
So your ministry, reaching out to people, is called uh, TalkDoctor.TV. Would you be able to help uh, the viewers understand what it is all about? Yes, no problem. Um, Michael and I are realizing a dream. And um, Michael has such a wealth of knowledge of, of professional counseling. Mm -hmm. And I have a heart to see men and women free, particularly women who have not found their voice. Mm. And um, I also was redreamed in a profound way. And I've always dreamed of writing books okay. to help people get free mm. from, the, from the things of their past that are holding them back. Right. Because so many times, even as Christians, the past tends to dictate our future, right. even though we don't want it to, right. even though we know in the word that, it, that there is more for what God wants for us. Mm -hmm. um, we are stumbled by mm -hmm. the things that are holding us back. Mm -hmm. Like, like Michael's, Michael's example was a wound of his father, right. not keeping a promise. I, I had wounds myself. I was born in a seven, uh, seven women in my family, so oh, really? I, was, I, I know the things that the women deal with. Mm. Um, and I was the youngest, and I, w I felt unseen mm. because I was the youngest. Right. Um, and that perpetuated me into mm. uh, doing things that were not healthy for my life. Right. Michael and I started Doc Talk Through TV as a culmination of helping people get free. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's an on-demand Christian mm. counseling platform right. where people can learn and grow mm. at their own pace okay. by dealing with the wounds of their past. Mm -hmm. What was your experience coming to this realization saying that there is hope? There is hope. Um, you said you were unseen, yeah. uh, invisible. Um, would you be able to elaborate a little sure. bit on that? When you're, uh, when because you're... many of our young people are feeling the same way. You know, sometimes they, this maybe it is imaginary. They may think that, you know, they are being ignored or they are not valued right or there are several things. Um, I think you can be able to um, vocalize it better yeah. than me. Yeah. Um, would you, would you ex um, explain a little bit? I, I, was, I was born in an Italian family okay. with a lot of activity around me. Right. Um, and I had very strong vocal sisters. Oh, okay. So I learned to keep my voice down, not raise a lot of fuss. Right. Um, I learned how to be obedient and I learned to be, to be submissive right. and not know who I was mm -hmm. um, as an individual. Right. I became a Christian in my 20s. Right. And I So what was your background, uh, oh, Italian? Italian um, Catholic. Okay. Uh, I grew up in... Um, very large family okay. and um, when I went on into adulthood I was carrying some of the things that were in my past right such I felt because I was um, I was born in an all women family right. with the exception of my father right the only male role model I had was my father okay so uh, and that role model was he was very busy and mm. he was always tired right because he was a breadwinner of this very large family right and um i felt that i had to cater to his needs right. in order to be seen right so i pretended to like football or mm. i pretended to like baseball mm. because that's what he was into right, right when i became an adult and on my own those habits so still that were there right right even though i wanted to find who i was right when i became a christian you know in the church, they say you find your identity in Christ. What right. really does that mean? Right. Jesus died and, and, and lived and uh, died for me and, and is a redeemer of my sins. And Yes, but it doesn't stop there. Right. After you become a Christian, there's a sanctification process. Right. There's a process of growing and learning what it means to be a Christian, mm. a God-fearing Christian where you can love others mm out of what God has done for you. Okay. And that's why we started Talk Doctors to, okay. to do that. Um, what is the, the, what is the, is the facilities available to people who are facing with challenges just you, you both are sharing or some other 
uh, psychological or spiritual problems they are facing? What, kind, what, is, what is available there on Talk Doctor? We have um, two courses out right now. Mm -hmm. One of them is the one that we, ju we just mentioned. It's called the Christian Shadow Work Journal. Right. What it does is it, the journal is a baseline for okay. you to look at anxiety, fear, rejection, insecurity, the things that are holding you back, mm. apply the word to it. Right. Where you learn from the characters in the Bible who suffered the same ailments that you are, mm -hmm. knowing that there is nothing new under the sun. Right. We also have a video courseware okay. that you that, that is a companion to this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy the courseware, but if you choose to buy the courseware, we help you through on how to deal with trauma, okay. how to deal with anxiety, how to uh, catch yourself when you have incorrect thought patterns mm -hmm. that prohibited you from going forward. Mm -hmm. So that's one courseware. And we have another courseware on breaking free of rejection, right. which is Michael's and my life story right. about how to get free from feeling rejected. Even in the kingdom of God, you tend to feel rejected, mm -hmm. which is all rooted in the Garden of Eden. Right. And we have courseware, excuse me, a book and a video that goes with that as well. So you, people who want to access it have to subscribe? Not necessarily. You can buy the book. You don't have to subscribe. Okay. That's available on Amazon right now mm -hmm. or docdoctor.tv. Okay. Um, but you can choose to have a video course where, so you have your own personal uh, counselor to work with Available. You. Yeah. And it's completely optional, but we highly encourage it because it really helps you feel like you have somebody on your side as you go through the process. Well, how come you come up with this title, Christian Shadow Work Journal? What would you... Well, uh, Shadow Work became super popular this past summer okay. with our young, our youth. Mm -hmm. It was um, searched for 10,000 searches mm. on how to do shadow work, which is a concept that was developed by uh, Carl Jung, who is mm. a psychologist. Right. Um, and he says the shadows or the things that we hide or repress right. should be addressed. Those shadows are anxiety, fear, um, enmeshment, things mm. that hold you back. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not coming from a biblical perspective. Right. Our Christian shadow work comes from the biblical perspective. So you are turning around. That's uh, exactly right. Mm -hmm. Because you can go delve into the areas of your past, but where are you gonna go if you don't have the light of Christ to help mm -hmm. you get through? The scripture is where your answers are. Mm -hmm. And Carl Jung does not know scripture. Right. Where my husband and I apply scripture mm -hmm. from a, a, a biblical foundation, a biblical basis, and we mm -hmm. help you get through those areas of anxiety mm -hmm. and depression, etc. What What would you say to the viewer who is facing with such challenges so, in their life? Hope is available. Right. <laughs> Hope is available and Jesus Christ, it's not, he's not just a spiritual being. He's somebody that is there and he is somebody who wants to help you and he has the answers and the Bible, the word of God is there to help you with those answers. And if you need help along the way, there's somebody who's here to help for you. We are not here to judge you. No. We are not here to put you down and say, Oh, this is your problem. No. Um, but he, we are here to help you. And these two special people took their time out to think about. I would say they are walking beyond their time, before their time, to address a problem that is, that is killing people, destroying a generation, and sending them to hellfire, That's right. but there is hope, as Absolutely. Sister Michelle told you, that there is hope available. And these um, things that, uh, that they are offering can equip you to bless you, to change you, to deliver you, to give you a new life, a new lease on life, so that you can be blessed. Once again, we wanted to, uh, to show you this uh, handbook that is available for you to uh, purchase. Uh, it will be available in most major um, yeah. uh, Amazon and it's on Amazon, all, yep. all the other uh, bookstores where you can 
uh, fine books and um, reach out to them through talkdoctor.tv so that your life will be enriched, it will be blessed. And thank you, thank you. on That's behalf so of um, Harvest TV viewers thank you for, having for us. Uh, giving us this time to give us a little bit of the uh, insight uh, into how to deal with this um, big crisis that we, this generation yes. is thank facing. Thank you for having us. God thank bless you. So you. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Bless you.